about another um, aspect of the questing map that I said we would be talking about. And that is, we're going to be talking about the uh, Champion's Tower and Ragnall's Cove. And more or just less, uh, why we should be doing that, uh, especially as a new player. Um, I'll tell you why. Uh, if you come here to the tower, um, the first question I always get asked about this, and I see people asking other people all the time, is where can I get map pieces? And you can get, get map pieces uh, from two places. Um, you can get them from your daily quests. Let's see if I have one here that has... Okay, so here we go. So I can collect 20 one-star cards and get one map piece. Uh, you know, and they random... Uh, they, here's another one. Collect a six-star card um, and get another type of, of map piece. So that's one place you can get them. Another place is actually uh, just so happened that we have a grab bag arena. And if you go here to the grab bag, I believe it is this one, yeah. If you grab bag happens once a week, um, max might tier is 8,000, and you start with 1,000. So you only have to get 7,000 might, which as a new player, that can be difficult. But uh, if you look down, you scroll down to the beginning, um, you know, you get you get some, some of the most, you know, some of the more early map pieces that you need at lower might tiers. Um, so this is something you'll definitely want to keep your eye out, especially if you're looking for... Um, you know, wanting to beat that tower. Um, you know, it, some of the fights can be very difficult early on. Um, you know, it, I look back now, and you know, it's one of the things that took me a while. Um, I'm trying to remember, it was one of these Sons of Fenric or something like that. You know, the the boss at like three hundred thousand, you know, attack, which was a lot for me to overcome back uh, when I first started. But um, basically, just uh, the principle of this is that you there are seventy two uh, stars you can get in this. Um, and you know, it's divided up by you get three stars for going into each one. There are, uh, you know, you see here you have the dungeon keeper, you have your possible rewards, and then it has your cost. You know, so this one, this first floor doesn't cost any map pieces. Uh, you go up here, second floor, still no map pieces. Uh, it, it it's not until you get up into the, like this one right here it costs one map piece. Um, so you know, but then you go all the way up. You know, um, and then you know you get to it's costing you know two two of a different type of map piece, um, and you know so so let's just see, talk to you here about the token. So the the conquest emblems are what you want to farm, and um, uh, you can get these. You go and go into the shop. Um, I'm not going to go into here, but uh, so you can scroll down to the bottom of the card shop. And there's going to be a place where you can redeem these tokens for, uh, I believe it's only six star cards right now. Um, you can go, so you can get a Sir Percival, an Arthur the Young, Death, Soul Cage, Scarecrow, and Sir Lionel. Um, you know, not not great cards, uh, especially now with you know seven stars and anything like that. But still, it's not bad. Um, another important thing are these chests. Now, these chests are where you can get uh, card shards of particular heroes. And I know uh, for certain. Two of the heroes that you get card shards for um, are the Fisher King, which is a very wonderful, wonderful card. Uh, he has some great combos. Um, he has an uh, innate passive of 125 HP and 12 Reflect. Uh, the 12 Reflect is, you know, it's not much, but it's it, it's nice. And the 125 HP is awesome, especially when he's combined with uh, Mail and Pendragon, Gwain, uh, Sir Gwain, and uh, Garrus. Um, you know they they uh, he, they have some really great combos that add a lot of HP and a lot of attack. Uh, I think this this right here it's not even you know I don't even have a lot of them that high tier or anything like that, but um, they are uh, I think the you know it's like eight million HP and eight million attack when I when I go in. Um, anyhow, so so that's why you want to do the tower. Uh, the tower is important because um, you know you get those card shards as you go up and progress through it. Um, so let's go down here and just take a look at some of the early ones that you're going to encounter. Uh, so you kind of know what you're looking for. So we're going to go into floor four here. Um, as you can see, there's that bar up here, uh, the blue bar, which is the, um, that's like your endurance. So it uses a different type of stamina currency here that requires a different type of potion. So you're going to get these potions from, you know, um, uh, arenas, you know, different like tier rewards for, you know different different other types of uh, PvP and everything like that. So you know they're important. Um, you can get them from chests as well um, as rewards uh, from opening chests. Uh, you're not going to get to a point where like you're you're in such a rush to do this tower that you're going to have to um, you know just 
burn potion after potion after potion to you know get through it it's it's something you go through once and then you can casually farm as you want but the the mo the best rewards come from when you go through your initial first time so as you can see we have our little character here we're going to move him around uh it's kind of a maze kind of figuring out like you know um where we're going and what we're going to do here so we're just going to fight this little boss um something something important to we're just going to skip it it's not it's not that important something to, to note is here all right uh so you get rewards for being the bosses in here but at the bottom you see here there are, at the very bottom there's a, a star for treasure which i'm at zero out of two bosses one out of two and dungeon keeper zero out of one you want to get as many stars as you can on these so you know it really forces you to want to do all the exp uh, exploration as you can see doing uh Exposing treasure chests can cost you stamina, um, or sorry, endurance, and also can proc uh, a, a miniature boss fight. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind. Just because you get a treasure chest doesn't mean that you're not going to have to fight for it. Um, and obviously, th the lava and these little wall pieces are, are kind of you know what, what help you uh, you know figure out where you're going in this maze. Um, there are maps of this online somewhere. I don't really know where. Um, uh, I don't know if it's really that important or helpful, mainly just because, you know, you, you you have the time. So, you know, just just take the time to make sure you explore everything. Uh, make sure you grab all the treasure and make sure you fight all the bosses so you can get as many stars as possible. That's what the, the, I think the most important thing is about doing these is, is getting as many stars as you can. Um, and you'll slowly get the tokens. Uh, here's, here's our second um, second chest. So there we go. We got the first star for treasure. Um we're at two out of two bosses, or sorry, you know, m many bosses, and now we're going to go fight the Dungeon Keeper right here, which is Fenric Goraclaw. Um, I remember this guy back in the day was quite the quite the five-star card. I really, really enjoyed uh, his artwork and <laughs> his abilities. Uh, he's really falling outside the meta now, but I uh, see yeah, a level one. He's, he's nothing. He's nothing. But anyway, so we beat that. So that's, you go in through the door there, and here you go. You got the th uh, three stars. We beat level four. We got 50 tokens plus another 20 and an arena ticket. Um, rewards in this are minimal. Uh, you know, you, you go up higher um, in the tower. You know, we're up here on 30th and 32nd floor. Uh, you get better rewards as far as you get more tokens. Um, you can you can do this uh, like a mini farm for potions uh, because, you know, there's, there's a chance that you're going to get four or five potions from a chest uh, inside and doing it and then possible rewards that you'll get potions as a completion reward as well. Um, so, you know, it's, but the, I would say the, the most important reason why you want to do this and why you, you should be doing this, especially if you're a new player, are these boxes, these little treasure boxes. I can't open them up because, and show you what's inside them because, you know, I've already, I've already opened them all, but these are, where, these are going to, you know, you're going to get seven star heroes from this. I know, uh, for certain that you get, you get a Fisher King, you get a Topaz Dragon, which, eh, he's not then special, but, you know, it's still a seven star card is a seven star card. Um, especially if you're first starting out, you know, that helps a ton. Um, but yeah, so let's just go in and see if anyone's in the guild and if anyone's ready for the raid. Uh, let's just see, raid. Uh, I asked in our line group earlier uh, if we could get a raid going so I could show you. Uh, because the next part I want, uh, next place I want to show you guys is Ragnall's Cove. Now Ragnall's Cove is a guild exclusive uh, place where you can go in and do raids. Um, so you come in here, and I'm just going to show you real quick. Um, I'm waiting online. Okay, raid starting. So um, he's going to uh, he's going to Div is going to start the raid, which is great. I'll just say awesome. I can't type. All right, so he's gonna start the raid. Um, and yeah, so so there's four bosses in here. Um, you got yeah, Borgard, uh, Jezebel the Shriek, Austin the Dread, and Blood Queen. Um, you know, you see here it says sleeping. Uh, guild uh, leaders and and champions can um, you know, a, a choose to start a raid. Uh, you know, so they range in how long they last, anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. This, you know, Austin the Dread is an hour, you know, because he has more HP, he's a bit more hard, more difficult. Then you see also these things, these scrolls. Now, see, there are scrolls that you farm throughout the game, um, and I think you can get them. And well, there's not a, there's there's not a, a scroll arena right now, but once a week there's a scroll arena where you can go in and farm. So it's really important that you know you go in there to the arena. Uh, 
max out your might tier and get the scrolls to help your guild. So especially uh, the main important thing is, especially if you're first starting up a guild, is to farming up those um, farming up those scrolls so that your uh, guild can and raid consistently. So let's go in here and check it out. Um, I know I'm kind of uh, pushing through on the time here. But uh, so this is the setup of what it looks like to do a raid. Uh, I remember the first time I did this, I had no idea. So you have your chat option. Um, I'm gonna say here, uh, say hello. Um, and uh, then you, you have a chest. So this just shows you. Um, so I have Div and Flub in here with me. Those are two of my guildmates, uh, great players. I uh, really enjoy hanging out with them in line and and uh, seeing, you know, they're way, way better than I am. Uh, but you have a retreat option here. Here's your team, um, you know, your party, um, and then you have your attacks and your mana uh, in the top right there, and then you have the boss health. Um, something you want to do with this, um, just like when you're farming for summon stones, uh, I've talked about that before, is you want to have a, a, a mana efficient party. Um, something that's, you know, because otherwise, if you're, if you're doing this on max mana every single time, uh, you're going to be burning a lot of pots, and it's not really worth it. Um, you know, uh, guild raids—they're nice. Um, you know, they're—they're—you know, you can get some decent rewards. I know I've mentioned it in the uh, enhancement video. This is one of two places where you can get golden donkeys uh, consistently outside of uh, city events. Uh, you can get them here. Um, so you know, there you go. I just did my first attack. See, we got a, a one-star brown donkey, some charms, and a summon ticket. You know, um, it tells you your damage, gives you a little report. Uh, we're just going to do this some more here. And so uh, the important thing here is noticing that I'm doing the different attacks. So I did a sneak attack. I'm doing a back attack. Um, you know, the uh, this is basically the attacks determine about how much health of the boss you're trying to take on. Um, and so, like, the sneak attack is, like, your lowest attack. Um, it's not going to take a lot of health. And you can get cards from this, too. So, you know, you see I got a, a, a skin changer there um, and then, some, you know, some more rewards. Um, but yeah, so so like the lower the lower attacks, and this is a side attack. Um, they um, uh, they they don't require as much. Uh, uh, they don't require you to do as much damage. So you know, if you're first starting out, you know you're going to be doing like a lot of sneaks and a lot of you know back attacks. Um, but you know, the the stronger you are, um, you know, the more attack you're able to do. As you can see, this team has like 1.2 million health and uh, you know 21 or 2.1 million attack. You know, it's not a great team. This is what I used to farm, uh, you know, Rion's, um, Rion's. So you know, it's not, it's not the max. I, I haven't maximized it out or anything like that. Um, but it does a job. You know, I mean, it does it does plenty of damage, and you know, it, it gets the job done. So you know, basically, this is this is just how it goes. Uh, this is why, um, you know, looking at these rewards, you get some good. I got a four star card there. You know, so I mean, there definitely are good rewards and good reasons why you want to do this. Um, you know, the debate is, you know, as a guild, do, uh, do we have regular skilled, uh, re regularly scheduled raids? Uh, you know, the one thing about Heroes of Camelot is something I will say is I, I play with people from all over the world, you know, um, all kinds of time zones, everything like that. So it's really hard for us, uh, as like an international guild to have a set time of when we're going to be doing attacks, you know, or sorry, d doing raids. So um, what we do is is we just do it by request because, you know, since it's an international guild, uh, there are going to be people, um, you know, in all different time zones that are awake. So if someone is uh, asking for a raid, you know, at, at 3 o'clock in the night for me, someone is in line uh, and is able to help them out and get a raid started. And we usually have enough people online that, that you know, that we don't have a problem finishing it. Um, but, you know, other guilds, they have, like, specific raid times that they, that, you know, they do it a standard time of day you know and it, it works for some people or it doesn't work for everybody uh it's, it's all about what your guild leader decides um you know and we you know what you guys are able to do um i know we just started a second guild uh recently just because we have um you know a lot of new players wanting to join and there's a cap on how many people can join guilds so uh anyhow yeah hope you had a good time and i'll see you next time